Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. And the Wolfman. And Dracula. But I guess Frankenstein's more profitable. For those who don't know, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello were big comedians around this time in the 40s and 50s. Sort of think of them as a duo version of the Three Stooges, with Abbott being a serious one and Costello being a silly one. But around the point of this film's release, both them and the monsters weren't doing too hot, so why not cross over? Oh, it's one of those comedies that begins with an animated intro. But animation does look amazing. It actually is animated by the same guy who did Woody Woodpecker. The film actually begins with Larry trying to call someone. This film is technically non-continuity with the rest of the series because it's a comedy, so Larry's still the Wolfman even though he was cured in the House of Dracula, but who gives a wolf's perfect ass about continuity? Anyways, Larry's trying to call Abbott Costello, who are playing the characters Chick, the serious one, and Wilbur, the silly one. But I'll still probably just call them Abbott Costello throughout the film. There are luggage movers, and after some shenanigans and introducing some lady named Chandra, they finally make it to the phone, and Larry's trying to tell them to not deliver two packages bound to the horror show Wax Museum. But oh no, full moon, and he changes. Yeah, just like his mustache, even the werewolf has got trim. But the boss man wants the cargo delivered anyway, because it has Dracula's coffin and the Frankenstein monster's body. We still do not care about continuity, how they ended up. They move the boxes with shenanigans. Ah, oh, what if this was also a crossover of House of Wax? Four years too early, but still. And that night, Dracula awakens. And there's some comedy about how Abbott can't see Dracula, and Costello's freaking out about him. And yes, if you notice, that is Bela Lugosi, the Dracula himself. With a brand new yellow gold line cape, with pockets even. Unlike his original black cape or silver line inner cape that he was buried in, not to be confused with the red cape that Christopher Lee wore, despite Bela being the face of Dracula, this is his only reprisal to the role. In film form, because of course he played him on stage. Well, I guess there was also that part in Hollywood on Parade where he attacked Betty Boop. You have booped your last boop. <laughs> there was that time he hosted You Asked. He did play Unrelated Vampires, and of course, famously, uh, Call Me Again in 2000 subscribers. Despite Bela eventually being buried with his onyx ring, during this film he's wearing John Carradine's ring from the last two films. I guess Bela Lugosi and John Carradine have the same ring size. So the two decided to dig into the crate and find a Frankenstein's monster. Abbott steps out for a second, so Costello gets hypnotized by Dracula. He's covering his mouth with his cape a lot in this film. He kind of did that a little in the original, but what gives? He does it all the time in this film. What, has he got COVID? He revives the monster of cartoon electricity. Hey, look at that. They actually revive him before the last two seconds of the film. Master. Holy shit, they actually remember he can talk. He got to out of the crate in the same way I got out of bed. Costello's hypnotism wears off, but he pretends as the monsters leave. Everyone comes back in, and they're mad that the exhibits are gone. The monsters make it to a castle with a giant door knocker, and Chandra's there. She was working with them all along. Nervous, my dear? This is risky business. Not as risky as those curious operations of yours. Restore the monster for me, and you shall have anything you wish. His accent's still cool. Why didn't they put him in other films? So anyway, Chandra is going to work on the monster, and we're doing the whole brain thing yet again, because at this point, I think even I had my brain swapped. They want Costello's brain in the monster because he's dumb enough to control, even though I think the monster is dumb enough already, so whatever. The two are in a hotel room, and Larry bumps into them, tries to convince them about the monsters, but the moon's rising, so he has them lock him in his room. But ah, he forgot his luggage. Shenanigans. S Comedic gold. There's a new girl, Joanne, who helps him out with the pickle of the lost exhibits. And she flirts with Costello. Oh. He invites her to the masquerade ball. And oh no, he's got two dates. Oh. Larry tries telling him about monsters again, but they're still not believing. 
Everyone arrives at the castle and meets Professor Stevens, Joanne's assistant. Larry calls the two and says to beware, they're in the house of Dracula. Name drop for the wrong film. And yet this film is far better than either of the house films. Costello's convinced, but Abbott's a little more skeptical and wants to explore the place. They find a dungeon. And Costello finds a secret room and the Frankenstein monster. This part took multiple takes and you can tell because Frankenstein's trying to hold back his laughter. He makes it back into the dungeon and he tries showing them the secret lair and shenanigans. I go near that place anymore. <laughs> Oh, stop. Now listen, Wilbur. That's hilarious. Chandra's getting ready, and Joanne finds Frankenstein's diary, because I think everyone has a copy of that by this point. They meet up. I think this film's accidentally progressive. Then they meet Dracula in a disguise as Dr. Lejos, which is almost his name. He talks to Sandra, and there's actually some villain disputing, or Sandra doesn't want to go through the plan anymore. Kind of rare at this time. But he just hypnotizes her and sucks her blood. Also, you can totally see his reflection, unlike in the original film. There's probably a reason, because mirrors, but whatever. Some shenanigans with the boss. The duo bumps into Larry yet again. But then everyone else bumps into each other. Dracula decides to dance with Joanne, and Chandra and Costello head off. Guess she turned into a vampire. But all the guys meet up looking for Dracula. But oh no, Monzo! Now Costello's getting stalked by the Wolfman. And it goes about as well as you think. And he thinks it's Abbott in a werewolf mask. But he's back with the rest of them at the party. Dracula finds Costello in the woods. And he decides to transform. For a very first time on screen. Into a cartoon. And then into the bat. He runs away finding Joanne. But she's hypnotized. And on a boat. Abbott finds everyone, but he gets hypnotized and goes away, as Dracula literally drives the boat away. Guess it really isn't that hard to get your boating license. Larry finds Abbott, and he's finally believing in the monsters. So now I have to come up with a plan to save Costello, who's currently waiting for everyone to wake up because daytime. Kind of shocking plot twist, even actually wasn't in on any of this. So he gets taken out, as the others find a cave that leads into the lair. As Dracula preps Frankenstein's monster. Come, lie down. Here. Yes, master. Frankie, I told him to do it to you. Frankie boy. He calls him Frankie, even though that's wrong because he's not the Frankenstein. He's just the monster. I guess technically he still has Igor's brain in his head. Well, then again, I guess he is yeah, of Frankenstein because he did wrong, get created by someone with the name thing, Frankenstein. The son of my father, he's, he's technically Igor in the monster's body, so wouldn't that well, then, mean, then, like, does he self identify as a Frankenstein? Frankenstein? If the monster and the bride got together, does that mean that they are technically incestuous because they are related? They are being by the same guy. Anyways, Abbott and Larry save Costello. But then Dracula hypnotizes Costello to come back. So they have to save him. Again. Abbott accidentally bashes Chandra in the head of a chair. And runs out the uh, barn door. Larry tries on tying Costello. But ah, when well, you know it, it's like the fourth night in a row that has a full moon. And he turns and knocks over a computer or whatever and starts sparks. Him and Dracula have a push war over Costello. Even this tiny bit here of Wolfman vs. Dracula is way better than the last two films. They take their fight out. Frankenstein gets off the slab and he literally just yeets Chandra out the window. It's super chaotic and everyone's running around. Dracula tries escaping but Larry catches him and dives into the water which I guess kills him even though I think he jumped even farther in House of Frankenstein. Kind of a disappointment especially for this being the last time either of them will be in film as their iconic characters. Joanne is unvampired. The dynamic duo escape to a boat as Steve then sets the dock with Frankenstein's monster ablaze. As he catches on fire and falls through the dock, so he should be fine, but whatever. The monsters are all dead. That's too bad. I was hoping to get in on the excitement. Who said that? 
allow me to introduce myself. I'm the Invisible Man. <laughs> Uncredited cameo by the ever awesome Vincent Price. Unfortunately, this does not actually lead into Abbott and Costello meets the Invisible Man. This film is really funny. The film also helped the careers of the dynamic duo, launching a few more films, most of which after this also involved monsters. But some of the other cast didn't really like the film. Like Lon Chaney was really upset that the monsters were now being used as gags. And there was also a lot of weird censorship of the film. Such as in the UK, the film was re-edited to have less of the monsters as Abbott and Costello meets the killer Boris Karloff, who's not in the original film for some reason. But as it is, the film is actually really funny, with tons of slapstick and clever dialogue, a trend of the time. The monsters are all taken serious. They're kind of just having to interact with this silly world around the Abbott and Costello, which I definitely think is for the best and does make the film funnier. I love seeing Bela Lugosi return again. I'm still constantly confused that Frankenstein is the title character, even though he's not that important. It's great seeing Lon Chaney one last time. And, you know, actually seeing the damn monsters interact instead of just being on screen for two seconds, unlike the last two films. It kind of makes me wish that there was some weird phantom cut of all three of these films to make one great film. But as is, this does deserve the title of one of the funniest films ever. And I think it is actually way better than most of the other sequels. 9 out of 10. Make sure to like, share, comment, and if you're new here, subscribe for more. I saw Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. I, I literally thought it was the greatest movie that has ever been made and that ever possibly will be made because it literally was the two my two favorite things in the world put together. It was horror and it was comedy.